and welcome to part one of Let's Play Lady Sia for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, yeah. Probably not a lot of you have heard of this one, and that's probably because it was an early Game Boy Advance title. It was, uh, released in 2001, and it was, well, you can see the developers right here. And despite critical praise and all that, uh, it didn't sell too well, and, well, they had a couple sequels planned. They uh, actually had a lot of work done on the sequel for the Game Boy Advance, but it got canned, and there were even some beta tests, like they had some beta stuff for a GameCube one, but that got cancelled as well, which uh, sucks. But this one was released, and it's actually pretty fun. Uh, and well, I've already missed a couple things I should have said, but there's a glitch right at the beginning of the game where when you hit new game, if you hold start at the right time, you can skip that whole first little area of you in prison. It's weird. There's, it goes all glitchy and then it just skips that area. It's really weird. And uh, I skipped the cutscenes at the beginning and in all honesty, I probably should have left them in because they, imp they look impressive for some of the earliest Game Boy Advance stuff. Uh, excuse me. And another crazy glitch I should have showed off, I don't know why I didn't, uh, there's a weird shortcut you can take back there, it's not supposed to be there, but you can basically climb the walls, there's these weird invisible ledges, and then you can go through this one wall, and you can take a big shortcut that way, and I, for some reason I didn't show it off in this run, I really should have, but, uh, there were a lot of glitches I should have showed off in this run, but couldn't. Um, but yeah, I got this game... I, like, I saw this game on store shelves when I was, like, 11 when it came out. And, you know, I was 11 years old, and it had a hot babe on the front, so I wanted it. I really wanted it, but I was too embarrassed to ask my mom to buy it, because, you know, there was a warrior princess babe chick on the front, and I thought she would have thought it was weird that I was asking for it. So I didn't get it, despite me really wanting it. But, I, but of course, I only wanted it because of the girl on the front. I didn't know anything about the game, so... You know, that's 11-year-old boys, them and their puberty, and whatever. But, uh, it was only many, many years later that I finally played it, and, uh, it turned out it was actually a good game. I, I really liked it. Um, but, I, it's incredibly glitchy. It's got bugs up the ass, and, uh, you don't really see them too much as you play the game normally, but I, I was, uh, doing, doing a tool-assisted run for the longest time. Uh, excuse me again, and during all my experiences with tool assisting this, I uh, just found so many glitches. Oh, and by the way, you're supposed to explode that barrel with a magic spell, but I always just step on it and take damage because it's a nice shortcut. Oh, and I'm almost out of health. But yeah, I wanted it as a kid and I never got it. I played it, really liked it, and yeah, jeez, now I'm just recapping because I forgot what I said. Uh, but yeah, Tool Assisted Run, there's so many glitches. Uh, there's this one really weird one in uh, the fire level where it just goes completely broken and you have to restart the game. And then there's this really useful one where I call it the Sword Climb, where normally when you climb a ledge there's this big long ass animation, but if you slash your sword at like the exact frame while climbing, it skips the f climbing animation and uh, you just slash your sword at and you get up on the ledge. So it's way faster. But it has this weird side effect of just causing the, all this crazy shit to happen in the game, and there's so many glitches that appear because of it. Uh, one of the biggest ones being that after you get hit from the sword, when you do the sword climb and, after you're, and when you get hit, uh, if you're standing on a floor with... You, like, bleh. When you use the sword climb and then get hit, you fall through the floor. And, uh... It's sad, it sounds like a great glitch for uh, shortcuts and stuff, but sadly you can't use it too often at, in a, in a speedrun. There's not a lot of chances to really use it. If, I, I, if you could somehow walk through walls with it, then that would be amazing. But uh, as it stands, you can only fall through floors with it, which is still pretty good. And then, yeah, there's just a whole lot of level-specific things where the sword climb can just fuck everything up. It's a really weird glitch, and I don't know why it messes it up so badly. And now I have my green sword. Oh yeah. The one that's on the... I think that's the one on the box. Yeah, it is. This is this weird, wimpy, gray sword you get at the start. It takes four hits to kill the freaking bear monsters. 
Yeah, I never bothered to follow the plot because really it doesn't explain it too well and it's hard to follow. So that that's another reason why I skipped the intro cutscene. And also I skipped the intro cut one of the reasons I have a hard time following the story is I can never read that first scrolling text because it's so damn fast. Oh, time for a bee monster with a sword. Yeah, the enemies in this are all really weird. They're all animals because you're in some sort of weird animal kingdom of animal furry people. You got talking sharks and bears with swords and I don't know what those are. If they are bears or if they're moles or something. I don't know. But yeah, Lady Sia. Um, yeah, I'm sort of... I guess I'm out of history to say. Oh, by the way, here's a weird thing. How did I make that? I gotta figure out how I did that, and maybe that'll be good for speedrunning. Because normally you're supposed to, like, uh, climb up that ledge, but somehow I just managed to skip it. Oh yeah, great, great guard with the shield. I'm supposed to do this combo move to break him, but no, I'll just jump over you. Yeah, this is another game where the uh, L button, the shoulder buttons are kind of important. You can do all sorts of combos with them. Uh, most of which you will never need, except for very, except for specific enemies that you need to use them to kill them quickly. Uh, yeah, most of the time you never need them. And then later on you get uh, these magic spells. And, well, I won't go into them now. But, yeah, they're stupid. Oh yeah, if you're wondering what all these diamonds and crap are and these people I'm freeing from ropes by, you know, slashing them in the face, uh, those are sort of the collectibles you get. Uh, in order to get 100% on a level, you have to collect all 25 diamonds, rescue all 5 hostages, and beat the stage with full health and full magic. And that's how you get a perfect score. And if you get perfect scores on every level in the world, you unlock a bonus level, which is... Which kind of sucks because they just reuse the assets and sprites and crap from pre from a previous stage, but it's still cool to get an extra stage. Uh, and sometimes they aren't worth it though. Um, I haven't unlocked all of them though. I've never gotten the extra stage in the final world because ugh, getting perfect in the final levels is really annoying. But I think I'm only like one or two levels away from getting perfect in everything, so I really should do that. And this is the level, I think this is one of, like, two times you ride your eagle friend. Uh, coming up. And, hi, eagle friend. I always call him Eagle Claws. I don't even know if he has a name, but I call him Eagle Claws because uh, there's this one Charlie Brown line in... I can't remember which one it was. I think it was It's a Short Summer Charlie Brown, where uh, Peppermint Patty and Charlie Brown are doing that thing... They're, they're trying to see which team goes first on baseball, and they do this thing where whoever gets their hand on the top of it, whoever gets their hand, ah, whatever, it's not important. But basically, the, the gist of the joke is Peppermint Patty does this cheap tactic that you're not supposed to do, and she just goes, Eagle Claws! And Charlie Brown just keeps going like, Eagle Claws? <laughs> it's just so funny. I don't know. I find that hilarious, just Eagle Claws. So I love that line. I use it whenever I can. And yeah, it looks like I'm spazzing out here, but what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to perform a long jump, which isn't something you're supposed to be able to do, but there's this weird thing where if you crawl off a ledge and jump at the right time, like by crawling off of the ledge, you get some extra frames off of the... You can get a few extra frames forward and you can jump further because of it. And there's another way you can do it too, and combining the two in specific ways you can get pretty long jumps, but it's really hard to do without an emulator, so most of the time it's not worth it, but that's a pretty good shortcut, but uh, I probably wasted more time than I saved doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's a weird glitch. Uh, I don't know, that just happens sometimes where uh, the screen won't scroll down when you're on the eagle, so you have to get hit in order to fix it. <laughs> It's really weird. And this is the last area of the stage. And bye, Eagle. I don't think we'll ever use you again. <laughs> oh, wait, no, we do use you in a, a sort of quote-unquote boss fight. And then, yeah, I think that's really the last time we ever use it, so... Yay for a pointless feature! Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of pointless features in this game. So many controls that... 
got me stuck for the longest time because I didn't have the manual and I had to look it up online how to play the friggin' game. Because, uh, yeah, when I first played this it was on an, on an emulator and I later got the cartridge, as you can see, with the Game Boy Player. And we're coming up on the end of the part. Yeah, I saved the boss fight for the next part because, well, this footage was recorded back when you could only have ten minutes, so... Yeah, whatever. So yeah, this is old footage, so I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for part two.